Hello students, today we're going to learn how to give an angel reading. My life purpose isn't to give angel readings and a spiritual healing to clients. It is to teach people how to do these things for themselves and their clients. I always encourage my students to teach others to create an overspreading ripple effect that increases the awareness that we all have angels that we all can communicate with them and that we all have a spiritual gift that we can use to help ourselves and the world. The main difference between a psychic and an angel reader is that in the former, psychics normally receive information from the spirit guides, while in the latter, the guidance comes from God and the angels. An angel reading involves much more than giving a fortune or telling the future. It means teaching empowering and life affirming messages and spiritual tools so that clients know how to contact their own angels. It also usually involves con conducting some angel therapy healing. How to give an angel reading. An angel reading is similar to a psychic one except that you're directing the questions to the guardian angels and the spirit guides for the purpose of healing some life area and for guidance about someone's life mission. It is best to give an angel reading to a person that you don't know very well, who is open-minded and non-judgmental. A new friend in a spiritual study group will be an ideal angel reading partner. And still, you can definitely do a reading for a family member or an old friend. It's just that your ego will scream at you. I already knew that about this person. If you can ignore the ego's rantings, you can give a, re a reading to anyone, whether you know the person or not. So let's begin with a mutual angel reading, where you and another person are reading each other simultaneously. Begin by saying a prayer to whomever you are aligned with spiritually. The words are, please help me to be a clear channel of divine communication. Please allow me to clearly hear, see, know, and feel accurate and detailed messages that will bring blessings to my partner and me. Please watch over this reading and help me relax and enjoy it. Thank you and Amen. Next, sit facing your partner. Then both of you shall take a metal object from your body, such as a watch, a ring, or a necklace, a belt buckle, a hair clip, glasses, or even car keys. Hand it to the other person. Each of you shall hold a metal item that you receive from your partner in the hand that you normally don't write with. This is the one where you receive energy, your receptive hand. Then hold your partner's free hand with your own. Place your hands where they'll comfortably rest for the next few moments, such as, for example, on your partner's knees or lap. Now, I would like to take you both on a vacation, okay? So please close your eyes and breathe in and out very slowly. Imagine that the two of you are in an exquisite purple pyramid that has magically transported you to a white sandy beach in Hawaii. The purple pyramid lands with a gentle plop on the sun and opens up, forming a natural blanket for the two of you. It is a perfect day on the island, and since this is a completely isolated beach that's only accessible by boat or plane, you and your partner have total privacy. You feel the gentle summer breeze blowing across your skin and through your hair. You smell the delicious salt air and hear the waves crash upon the shore. You feel a beam of sunlight dance warmly over the top of your head, as if it was going to be illuminating the inside of your mind and body. Off in the distance, you notice a pod of dolphins swimming playfully in the ocean. You tune in into these creatures and you feel them send you a huge wave of divine love energy. As your heart swells with warmth and gratitude for these beautiful animals, 
and this perfect day on the beach, you realize that you're one with the dolphins. And then this realization extends even farther. You are one with all the life in the ocean, including the sea turtles and the colorful tropical fish. And you're also one with the waves, the sun and the sun. Now you realize that you're one with all life, including your partner. And so mentally affirm to your partner, you and I are one. You and I are one. I am you and you are me. You and I are one. You realize that this oneness that you share is real. Although you may look different on the outside, on the inside, you and your partner truly do share one spirit, one light, and one love. You mentally affirm to your partner, one love, one love, one love. You scan your partner with your physical eyes closed. In your spiritual sight wide open, imagine what it would be like if you could see your partner's angels in your mind's eye. Why they might look like. As you scan around your partner one more time, you notice any of the angels that might be present. Tuning with them now by holding the intention of connecting with them. Even if you don't see anyone around your partner or you're unsure of yourself, you can still receive accurate messages from your partner's angels that will bring blessings to him or her. As you breathe in and and out deeply, you can hold the intention of having a silent conversation with these beings. Then mentally ask them, what would you like me to know about my partner? And repeat the question as you take note of impressions that come to you in response. Be aware of any thoughts, words, mental pictures or feelings that arise as you continue to ask the question, what would you like me to know about my partner? Don't try to force anything to happen. Simply trust that the answers are coming to you now. And notice even the little thought, feeling, vision or word in your mind. Next, mentally, ask your partner's angels, what message would you like me to tell my partner for you? Again, be cognizant of any impressions that come to you as thoughts, feelings, visions or words don't judge or discount these impressions simply view them with detachment then mentally ask your partner's angels is there anything that you would like to tell me be sure to breathe while you take heed of the answer and finally mentally ask these angels is there anything else that you like me to tell my partner Again, listen for the response from many levels. The most important part of giving an angel reading is having the courage to tell your partner everything that you receive, even if you're unsure about the information or worry that it might offend the person. You can always pray for a, for a diplomatic and loving way to deliver potentially offensive messages. While the angel messages make no sense to you, They'll probably make perfect sense to your partner. Spend the next few moments then sharing everything that you saw, felt, heard, or thought during your mutual angel reading. What kind of questions can you answer during a reading? When you give someone an angel's reading, you can answer their questions with the angel's guidance. The key is to get out of the way and tell your client everything that you see, hear, think, and feel during the reading. Reply and relate to the angels any questions that your client poses to you. Feel or see yourself as an intermediary who sends the heavenward and then receives the answers through your mind and body. Your role and obligation is to tell your client everything that you receive without hesitation. If you are unsure, and this of course is going to happen sometimes, of your answer, you can say so, but you still share the information. Usually clients understand the answers and you don't. That's because in an angel reading you function like a telephone for heaven 
Phones don't hesitate or argue before delivering a message. They're simply a conduit, just as you are doing in your readings. Here are the most common questions you're likely to receive while conducting an angel reading. Do we all have angels? The answer is always a resounding yes. This question comes from those who are new to angels. It's an opportunity for you to pass on the great news that everyone has guardian angels. These are non-denominational and unconditionally loving and approving. Who do you see around me? Your client doesn't actually care if you see which angels or guys around her. The question actually is, who do you discern around me? Some clients are in search of a specific departed loved one, while others pose this question because they're curious about the celestial angels. Sometimes people are going to us because they want to know if they have anyone with them. You can answer the question by closing your eyes and mentally scanning your client's head and shoulders. You can also scan with your hands skimming, but not touching your client's upper perimeter. Notice any areas that draw your attention. Then breathe and tune in. Focus upon your feelings, emotional or physical, visions, no matter how, how fragmented, sometimes you only get like small fleeting or fragmented visions, thoughts, even if you think they're about yourself, and sounds and words. Say it to the being around your client. Please tell me about yourself. And then relay the reply to your client. If your client is seeking a specific departed loved one, then please use the information that we covered before. What is my life purpose? This question normally means which job will you give me a sense of happiness and meaning while simultaneously, of course, guaranteeing that I could pay my bills. So these questions you're probably going to get a lot during readings. Occasionally, though, someone will ask you if it is a way of determining their spiritual path. So you might need to confirm with your client which direction they're inquiring about. Each person has a personal life purpose which means something that he or she is there to learn about the lifetime. Examples are patience, forgiveness, compassion, balance, and boundaries. Some people are light workers. Also, they also have a global purpose in addition to their personal one. Normally, this purpose has to do with some kind of thing to do for humanity. A global purpose is some contribution that your soul elected to make during your lifetime. Your global purpose might involve being a healer, a teacher, a writer, an artist, a comedian, or an advocate for animals and children, or some other role. This question is best related to Archangel Michael, who oversees everyone's life purpose. Fortunately, Michael is the loudest, blandest, and clearest angel with whom to communicate. So for life purpose readings, Focus upon your client's first name. Remember when we spoke on one, some of our first chapter lessons when we talk about the power of one and the particular way in which a person worked the, answer, the question. So make sure that you meditate upon the energy of these words. We talk, remember, I don't know if you remember, we talk about the, the name and the sounds of the name. That is important. So notice and tell your client everything that comes to your mind and body in response to their query, even if you think you might be making it up or might be intended for you. Most people want to know specific details and directions concerning the life purpose, so keep asking Archangel Michael for information and continue relaying it to the client. You're going to gain a lot of confidence in doing life purpose readings as your clients give you positive feedback after they have followed and been successful due to your readings messages. The types of questions that you can get are um, life purpose questions or career or job related questions that like we talked before, romance questions. And by the way, let me talk a little bit about romance questions. So. 
The most common romance angel reading question is, is this person my soulmate? No one asks this unless there are doubts about the relationship. If someone is your soulmate, you don't need to ask anyone. You will know. On the other hand, every romantic attachment happens for a purpose and is an opportunity to heal all emotional wounds, normally related to your parents or inclusive from other past lives. Romantic attraction functions like a laser, and you're drawn to people through whom you can forgive your dad or mom. While these healing relationships can be bumpy, they ultimately lead to huge spiritual growth for both people. The best way to handle romantic questions is to use the power of the name. So ask your client for the first name of the romantic partner in question. Then meditate upon it until you begin to get impressions through feelings, thoughts, visions, or words, and relate these impressions to your client. During Romans readings, it is very important to be conservative with your answers. And if a long-time married person or a woman with young children asks whether to get a divorce, for example, you want to maybe explore alternatives such as marital counseling. When working with angels, you look for venues that bring everyone peace whenever possible. Remember, and this is just a side note from me to you, that especially in Romans questions, there's always the other person's story, the person that is not with you in the reading. And normally we do an angel readings. We want, like I said before, to look for venues that bring everyone's peace whenever possible, including the person that is not present at the reading. Now, we, you're also going to encounter health questions. So with health questions, the issue of free will frequently arises. For example, if your client asks how their health will be in the future, then you have an opportunity to teach about prayer and positive affirmations and other considerations. Do some research on the latest studies about prayer healing. Um, and if you're guided to conduct spiritual healing during the reading, you can ask your client for permission to do so if you have this gift. This is entirely appropriate, but you'd really need to ask your client permission to do this. Keep your ethical considerations in mind when conducting a health reading. Stay conservative and don't advise clients to stop seeing their medical doctor or give up their medication. Although many times getting a second opinion or checking with a physician about reducing or changing their prescriptions can be appropriate. So my um, advice here is, if in doubt, refer out. In other words, if you got a situation you're not sure about, refer the client to someone who specializes in that area. It is also a good idea to meet local health practitioners who are spiritually minded, in which you can engage client referrals, and you can meet the spiritual professionals at churches and temples and at metaphysical stores, of course. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if you ever heard about remote viewing, but you definitely can do remote readings if you have that kind of gifts, which is kind of special. So your client doesn't have to be physically present with you, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic that we're going through right now. If you have that gift, you can do a reading remotely. You can talk to anyone's guardian angels, regardless of location. Um, so for example, there's an angel, what we call angel therapy practitioners or medical therapy, um, medical therapy practitioners that are more like a psychic mediums that do uh, therapy, health, healing. Um, so these people normally are gifted and regularly give professional readings via email, letters, and over the telephone with the same effectiveness as if you were in person with the client. So to conduct a remote reading, simply imagine the person sitting or standing before you. And scan his or her head and shoulders for angels and energies, just as the individual were physically beside you. Talk to the angels in the same fashion that we talked to you before, as if this was an in-person reading. And most of all, trust the impressions that you receive, because they're just as real as in any other form of reading. 
If you have any questions as we go into the lessons, please feel free to email me. You, uh, we can answer any questions that, that you have. And uh, make sure that when you ask questions that your clients pose by relaying this question to the angels, use this method and always practice. This is a lot of practice. So you always receive valuable guidance to help your clients. In the next videos, we're going to learn about divination methods that can also yield detailed information for you and your clients. As some people that are gifted or have some or one of the four players always use either oracle cards and other divination methods that we're going to talk in the next chapter. Thank you. I'll see you soon.